Then comes the section today, which has been given a small heading, and well, how our beat. Well, when we've understood what is Tarbut, then there comes a section here. The types of Tarbut. What occurs here on page 300 of the Lebanese edition, page 233 of the Egyptian print. The types of Tarbut. Then there comes the saying of Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah, wa tawagitu kathirun, wa rahusuhum khamsa, iblisu, lahanahumullah, wa man ubida, wa hu rabin. He said, and the tarhuts are many, and their heads are fine. And he starts to list them. The tarhuts are many. He mentions that the, head of, the heads of them are five. And he mentions them firstly. Iblis. May Allah curse him. May Allah's curse be upon him. And whoever is worshipped and he is pleased with that. So he mentions the first two in the list there. Iblis. Satan, Shaitan, when it was cursed be upon him, and whoever is worshipped and is pleased with that. Shaykh al said in his explanation, he is saying, What tawaditu kabirun, tawaditun khamsa, and the tawruts are many, and the heads of them are five. Shaykh al said, The tawruts, Upon whom this definition applies are in what preceded what came last week, the definition that came last week of the Tarhut is those whom it applies upon. He said, are everyone who is worshipped or followed or obeyed, and they are many. However, their heads are five, meaning their major ones are five. Are five. And he goes to the list one by one as one teacher. Firstly, the least that was cursed with him, La'an of Allah. And Shah Rosan explained what is meant by La'an of Allah. May Allah that was cursed with him. Meaning, May Allah expel him and distance him away from his mercy. And that is the meaning of la'an. What's cursed? His la'an is Allah distancing that one. Repelling him and putting him at a distance away from his mercy, far away from his mercy. On account of the fact that he refused to prostrate to Adam, and he disobeyed Allah, the perfect and most high. And he was proud and haughty. And he said, and Iblis said, when he was commanded by Allah to make prostration to Adam, he said instead, Surah Sa'd, the 38th Surah, Ayah 76. He refused to prostrate, and he explained himself by saying, He said, I am better than him. You created me from fire, and you created, created him from clay. Sheikh said, so therefore he disobeyed the command of Allah, and was haughty. So therefore Allah cursed him, and repelled him, and distanced him. And he is called Iblis. And why is he given the title of Iblis? Sheikh said he is called Iblis. It is said, in the, in the explanation here, why that is, title is given to Iblis. He said it is said because he, he was Ablas min al Rahman. Because he despaired of mercy. Meaning, Ya'isa, he became, or he despaired. Of mercy. 
So al mublis, a person who is described in the language as mublis, is one who despairs of something. So in other words, that the iblis was is called iblis, meaning one who is who's despaired, one who despairs or has mercy. He will not receive all his mercy. Then the Sheikh said, So iblis, may Allah's curse be upon him, is the head of the Tawhuds. Because he is the one who commands the worship of other than Allah. If you remember in the story from before, the story of Nuh and how Shirk first appeared, who was the one behind it when it first appeared? It was Iblis whispering to the people. Shirk first appeared. So Shirk said, because he is the one who commands with worship of other than Allah. And he is the one who commands with following other than the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And he is the one who commands obedience to other than Allah by declaring things permissible or forbidden So therefore Iblis, he is the source of evil and he is the head of the Tawhuts in, in all the three senses of Tawhut Iblis is the one who commands with that He is the one who commands the people to worship other than Allah. He is the one who commands them to obey in, in disobedience to Allah, in making things lawful or forbidden. He is the one who commands following other than the Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes him each time. So he is the first, and as the Shaykh said, he is the first of the Tawhuts, and indeed he is the head of them. Then he mentions the second of the Tawhuts. The second one, Man Ubida wa huwa the second one is whoever is worshipped and he is pleased with that. If anyone besides Allah who is worshipped and he is pleased with that. Meaning, he is, he is worshipped and he is pleased with being worshipped by the people. Then he is a Tawhut. As for one who is worshipped and he is not pleased with that, then he does not enter into that. Is someone the people worship, but he didn't ever seek that from the people. He's not pleased with that. <coughs> then he's, he doesn't fall under, under the definition of Tawud. Shaykh Bazan says, because Isa alayhi salatu wasalam has been worshipped besides Allah. However, he was not pleased with that. Isa alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah, Isa alayhi salam, no doubt the Christians have worshipped him. That does not make him, we don't give him the term Tawud. Because he was never pleased with that. Sheikh said, And his mother, and Uzair, and the awliya, the beloved servants of Allah, the beloved and obedient servants of Allah, and the salihun, the righteous people, from the servants of Allah, they are not <coughs> pleased with that. And all of these are people who have been worshipped by some people, but they were never pleased with that. Rather, they used to criticize this and fight against those who did it. So whoever is worshipped and he is not pleased with that, then he is not called a Tabu. Then Shaykh Razan gives evidence for that and mentions the issue of Isa in particular. He said, and that is because when Allah sent down His saying, "Innakum wa ma ta'budun min dun Allah, hasabu jahannam, antum laha waridun." So the twenty-first surah, ayah ninety-eight, with the explanation, "You," an address to the people of Shirk, "You, and whatever idols you worship, will be fuel for the hellfire." You will enter it. The Sheikh said, the, Sheikh said, the people of Shirk became, oh, became happy. And they said, We worship Al Masih, we worship the Messiah, and Isa, السلام, and we worship such and such, and we worship such and such. Therefore, they will be with us in the fire. And the people of Shirk tried to use this ayah. I mean, the people of Shirk obviously they worship many things. Some of the people of Shirk, the Christians amongst them, they worship Isa alayhi salam. 
some of the people of Shirk, they worship the angels. Some of the people of Shirk, they worship beloved servants of Allah who have died and passed away. So when this ayah came down, the is saying that the people of Shirk became happy. إِنَّكُمْ وَمَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ حَصَرُ جَهَنَّمْ أَنْتُمْ لَهَا وَارِدُونَ The explanation, whatever you and whatever you worship besides Allah will be fueled by the hellfire, you will enter it. So the Shaykh says, so the people should became happy. Meaning, okay, all these things that worship besides Allah, they will be with us in the fire. So Isa he will be there with us in the fire as well then. The Shaykh said, so this when they said this, Allah the Most High sent down these ayahs. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ سَبَقَتْ لَهُمْ مِنَّ الْحُسْنَى أُولَٰئِكَ عَنْهَا مُبْعَدُونَ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ حَسِيسَهَا وَهُمْ فِي وَهُمْ فِي مَشْتَهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ خَالِدُونَ Surah Al-Anbiya, same surah, ayahs 101 to 102. With the explanation, those for whom Allah has written that they shall be people of bliss, they shall be kept far away from it. They shall not hear even the slightest sound from it, from the fire. Mm. But rather, they shall be enjoying whatever their souls desire forever. She have said, and it occurs in the other ayah, that they said, so to Zukhruf, the 43rd surah, ayah 58, with the explanation that again the people of Shirk, they said, trying to raise objection, trying to justify what they were upon. <coughs> they said, are our gods better? Are those things that we worship better? Or is he? The Shaykh said, meaning, by that they meant, Isa, alayhi salam. Then he said, Allah the Most High said in reputation of them again, مَا ضَرَبُوهُ لَكَ إِلَّا جَلَلًا بَلْهُمْ قَوْمٌ خَسِمُونَ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا عَبْدٌ عَنْ عَمْنَا عَلَيْهِ وَجَعَلْنَاهُ مَثَلًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلٍ Surah Zukhruf, the same surah, 43rd surah, ayahs 58-59. With the explanation, they do not quote him as an example to you, Isa alayhi salam. They, they do not quote him, even people of shirk, they do not quote him as an example to you except in order to argue. Indeed, they are an argumentative people. He was no more than a slave upon whom we bestowed favor, and we made him an example for the Banu Israel, for the descendants of Israel. Sheikh Fawzan said, so he is a slave of Allah, and he was not pleased that he should be worshipped besides Allah. Indeed, Allah sent him to criticize that. And Allah sent Isa salam, to criticize the worship of anything besides Allah. And he quotes the ayat in proof of that. مَا قُلْتُ لَهُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَمَرْتَنِي بِهِ عَلَيْ قُدُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ Surah Al-Ma'idah, the fifth surah, ayah 117. In the context, the ayah in the context of the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when Isa is questioned about the worship of those who worshipped him, so that he will respond with the explanation, I did not say to them, in his question, did you command them to do this? So he will say, I to expose them, that he will say, I did not say to them, except what you commanded me to, that you should worship Allah alone, my Lord and your Lord. Shaykh Fawzan said, so therefore, the one who is worshipped, and he is not pleased with that. He does not enter under this threat. And he is not a marvelled. Because he rejects and criticizes that. Because a marvelled, a marvelled, is one who is pleased with being worshipped besides Allah, the mighty and majestic. Then comes the, <coughs> the saying of Shaykh al-Islam in continuation of the text. وَمَنْ دَعَ النَّاسَ and whoever calls the people to worship himself. <coughs> Shaykh Farzan said in explanation, and the third one, so we have the first two Tarouts, now is the third. Shaykh Farzan said that the third is whoever calls the people to worship himself. 
He said, such as the heads of the people of Shirk, those who call the people to worship them, such as Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, who said, فَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى Surah Al-Nazi'at, the 79th Surah, I-24. With the explanation that he, Fir'aun, said, so he said, I am your highest Lord. Shaykh Razan said, and like an Namrud, and like the extreme Sufis, those who call the people to worship them, to such an extent that they give instructions to the people to worship them after they have died. So that he says, so that one of them says, when matters become very difficult for you, then come to my grave. Meaning, when affairs become difficult for you, then you should come to my grave, and a few hands full of earth cannot prevent you from me. So they counsel the people to come to their graves and to worship them. Or rather they said they counsel people to come to their graves and they promise them that they will carry out their needs. So whoever calls the people to worship himself, whether whilst he is alive or after he has died, then he is from the heads of the Talmuds. And likewise, whoever calls the people to worship someone else besides him. He is from the Taghuts and they are the callers to shirk. They are Taghuts. Those who falsely beautify shirk for the people and they call it with other than its name and they say this is a case of Tawassu, a case of legitimate, um, seeking legitimate means to Allah, towards Allah. Or it is a case, they say, it's a case of shafa'a, legitimate intercession. And they are many. Of course, we find them in this country from the extreme Sufis, or many of the Sufis. They hide under the guise of the columns of Sufis, and what they're calling to is shirk. And then to, to, to just justify it, they say, no, it's not shirk. Don't believe those Wahhabis, yeah? It's not shirk. It's shafa'a, or it is to us, so it's not shirk at all. Going to the graves. Making requests from that righteous person in the race is to us, Salik Shabbat. And you should be aware it is shirk that they are calling you to. This one is calling to it, he is a Tawud. No matter what he calls himself and what he claims to be qualified from. This is shirk and he is a Tawud. The Sheikh said, having said that there are many, he said, Those Tawud, those are Tawuds, because they call the people to shirk. So they call to the worship of other than Allah and they call that with other than its name and they falsely adorn it for the people with doubts and with falsely adorned speech. They are Tawuds. The callers to shirk are Tawuds. Don't, mean, don't be fooled by the, the flowery language or the speeches they give or whatever if they're calling to it take the cover up, if they're calling to shirk, they are Tawuds. What they're calling to is shirk, whatever they call it, to us or whatever they want, men want to try and make a beautify with, be aware it is shirk and they are Tawud. So the Shaykh said, the callers to shirk are Tawuds. And everyone who is worshipped besides Allah and is pleased with that, or calls the people to the worship of himself, or calls the people to worship of other than Allah, then he is from the Tawuds. Indeed, he is from the heads of the Tawuds. Ask Allah for safety and salvation. Amen. And then comes the continuation of the main text, the same with Shaykh al Islam. وَمَنْ إِدْدَعَى شَيْئًا مِنَ الْغَيْبِ And whoever claims to possess anything from knowledge of the hidden and unseen. And whoever claims to possess anything from the veil. The hidden and the unseen. Shaykh Farzan said in explanation, the fourth one is whoever claims to possess anything from knowledge of the ghaib, the hidden and unseen. He said, and entering into this are as Sahara, the sorcerers, people of magic, and al Munadimun, the astrologers, 
and the Quran, soothsayers, the fortune tellers, and the Ramalun, the geomancers, and there are people who they draw lines from Ramu, uh, sun, they draw lines upon sun, and then they try and interpret these lines upon the sun to predict future events. Geomancers or draw Ramalun. And everyone who claims that he possesses knowledge of the hidden and the unseen and says to the people, such and such will occur for you. In whatever means they use to do it, they say, such and such will occur for you. For you, you will receive bliss or you will receive some hardship or you will have a successful marriage or you will have an unsuccessful one. Those people claim knowledge of the hidden and the unseen. And the way the hidden and unseen is not known except by Allah, the perfect and most high. Shaykh Muhammad Iman, from Allah in his explanation, he mentions some different categories of people. He mentions, for example, those people who read, who read tea leaves. Coffee cups, they have a cup and you, you drink your tea and you pour the remainder out. They try and read the tea leaves or what, the grains at the bottom. And they, they claim that if you look at it, you can't see anything. They claim they can predict things based upon it. So, whatever means they use to predict things from the hidden and the unseen. Shabbat Rosan said, and the raid, the hidden and the unseen, is not known except by Allah, the perfect and most high. Be the most high said. قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ غَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Surah Al-Namu, 27th Surah, by 65. With the explanation. No one in the heavens or the earth knows the ghayb, the hidden and the unseen, except Allah. Shabbat Allah Sallallahu said, and he the Most High said, عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَى غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا إِلَّا مَنِ اَرْتَضَى مِنْ رَسُولُ Surah Al-Jinn, 72nd Surah, Ayahs 26 to 27. The explanation, He, Allah, is the knower of the hidden and the unseen. And He does not reveal what He has kept hidden to anyone, except to one He is pleased with, whom He has sent as a messenger. Shaykh Razan said, and he the Most High said, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُمْ وَيَعْلَمُهَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابِ النَّبِيِّ سُورَةُ الْأَنْعَامِ سِكْسَةُ ثَوْرَةٍ آيَةٌ ثَلَاثَةٌ The explanation. And with Allah are the keys to the hidden and the unseen. No one knows it except Him. And He knows whatever is in the land and in the ocean. And no leaf falls except that He knows of it. Nor is there any grain in the darkness of the earth, nor any fresh thing, nor any dry thing except that it is written in a clear book. Shaykh Wazan said, explaining the phrase, لا يعلمها No one knows it except him. This is a limitation. So no one knows the ghayb, the hidden and unseen, except for Allah. Or, one to whom Allah has revealed something from the hidden and unseen, from his messengers for the benefit of mankind and as a miracle for the messenger. However, he will not know the hidden and unseen by himself. In that messenger, whoever, whoever, he will not know the hidden and unseen from himself. Rather, he only knows it from Allah's teaching it to him. So no one knows the hidden and unseen except for Allah. So therefore, whoever claims to have knowledge of the hidden and unseen then he would be a sharer with Allah with regard to something particular to him. He the perfect. So therefore that person is a mushrik, a person of shirk. He is a ta'ud and he is a kafir, a disbeliever.
and this is one of the greatest forms of apostasy, ridda, away from Islam, and claiming to have knowledge of the hidden and unseen. And the, the, finally, the last one, the saying of the Shah Islam in the main text, وَمَنْ حَكَمَ بِغَيْرِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ And whoever judges by other than what Allah sent down. Shah Islam said, the fifth one, is whoever judges by other than that which Allah sent down. And the proof is his saying, He the Most High, Yuriduna an yatahakamu ila ta'ud, Surah al Nisa, the fourth surah, by 60. The explanation they wish to refer for judgment to the ta'ud. Shah Bazan said, So whoever judges by other than that which Allah sent down, holding that to be permissible to do, then he will be a ta'ud. And the person who says it is permissible to refer for judgment to man-made laws or to the customs of the times of ignorance or to the customs of the tribes of the Bedouins and to leave behind the legislation. He says this is lawful to do or he says this is equal to that which Allah sent down. And if he says it is better than that which Allah sent down, or equal to that which Allah sent down, or he says it is just permissible to do, and he doesn't even say it is equal or better, he just says it's permissible to do this, then this person is a Tawud. If one says any of these three things, it will be a Tawud. And this is by the text of the Qur'an. He the Most High said, يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُوا إِلَى الْقَرْهُودِ The same ayah with the explanation, they wish to refer for judgment to al-Qarhud. Shaykh Razan said, it was called, he is called al-Qarhud because he has gone beyond his limit. Then he said, as for a person who judges by other than that which Allah sent down, whilst he affirms that that which, Allah, that which Allah sent down is what is obligatory to follow and is the truth and that anything else is false and futile and that he is judging is something futile then this person is counted as being a, a kafir, a disbeliever who has committed kufr of asghar, lesser kufr, lesser disbelief, which does not take a person outside the religion. In the first, the first category, the first three there, I mean that's major kufr. The person who holds that the, the man-made laws are better than Allah's laws, or are equal to Allah's laws, or that it's permissible to judge by those laws. That person is outside Islam. As for a person, as the Sheikh said here, he doesn't say that. He said, no, Allah's, Allah's laws there what is best, but he judges by something else, as the case here, which I've mentioned here. Then, he agrees that these other things are false and futile, but he just, for his, his weakness or whatever, <coughs> then he judges by something else. The Sheikh said, he has committed kufr, he has described a, a disbeliever, who has committed kufr al-asqar, lesser kufr, which does not take a person outside the religion. However, he is upon great danger. He is upon a way which may lead to kufr disbelief, which takes one outside the fold of Islam, if he becomes lax about this matter. And he said, as for one who judges by other than that which Allah sent down, without intending to do so, he mentions a separate category altogether, one who judges by something, and he gives a judgment, which is not a judgment sent down by the <coughs> Not intending to do so, it's, then the chef explains. Rather, from ijtihad, from personal striving and deduction. And he is a person who is rightful to be performing ijtihad, personal deduction, from the jurists, from the people of fiqh, fuqaha. And he performs ijtihad, he strives to attain the correct ruling. <coughs> However, he does not actually attain the judgment of Allah. 
and he, ma he makes a mistake in his ijtihad, then this is forgiven for him. I mean, what he judges in the end is not what Allah has sent down. The judgment he did, Islam says such and such. Based on his ijtihad, he's wrong. That is not Allah's judgment he's sent down. Then, for this, curse, this person here, in this case, it's much to him. He strives to attain, he strives to attain what's correct. But he, in the end, he was mistaken. The Shaykh said, This person is mistaken. This person is forgiven. Because <coughs> the evidence, he said, He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, إِذَا حَكَمَ الْحَاكِمُ فَاجْتَهَدَ ثُمَّ أَصَابُ فَرَهُ أَجْرَانُ وَإِذَا حَكَمَ فَاجْتَهَدَ ثُمَّ أَخْطَأَ فَرَهُ أَجْرُ When the judge judges and strives and he is correct, then he will receive two rewards. And when the judge strives and is mistaken, then for him there is one reward. In a footnote, they mentioned the hadith report, reported by Bukhari as hadith 7352 and by Muslim as hadith 1716. And it's a hadith of Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu. The Shaykh said, because he did not deliberately commit a mistake, he was intending the truth. He was intending to conform to the judgment of Allah the Mighty Majestic. However, he was not granted the success of attaining it. So this person is counted as being excused and one who will receive reward. However, it is not permissible to follow him upon the error. It is not permissible for us to follow him upon the error. So from this are the matters of ijtihad of the jurists, the scholars of fiqh, who have made a mistake in those matters, or the striving of the judges in the courts when they strive to attain to arrive at the ruling and they exert effort to reach the, the truth. However, they are not granted it. So their error is forgiven. Alhamdulillah. Thank you.